we believe that violent behavior could be triggered by some form of disconnect between mirror neurons and emotional brain centers. Lack of empathy is a starting point to understanding mastermind killers like Edmund Kemper. Murderers who, despite being intelligent and accomplished, show no regard for their victims. One of the most chilling of these mastermind killers was Ted Bundy. My name is Ted Bundy and I'm the defendant in the case and I'm just here to introduce myself. Bundy brutally murdered at least 35 young women across the United States in the 1970s. His violent streak began when he was an undergraduate at the University of Washington. After a girlfriend dumped him, he sought revenge on women, gaining their confidence by posing as a police officer, fireman or businessman. He would then rape, bludgeon and strangle them. Ted Bundy was an expert imposter because he was extremely attractive and persuasive. He knew how to take advantage of his good looks and charm. This was also evident during his trial. Bundy defended himself. He impressed even the judge. You're a bright young man. You made a good lawyer. I'd love to have you practice in front of me, but you went another way, partner. Thank you. Bundy was sentenced to death and was electrocuted in 1989. Some killers are so clever, so devious, that they are never found. One of the most notorious of these was the Zodiac Killer. In 1969, he terrorized the San Francisco Bay Area of California. He's an absolutely ruthless, completely merciless killer. He is known to have murdered five people and remains a suspect in at least a dozen other unsolved attacks. Most of his victims were young couples. He taunted the police and left clues in letters he sent to the press. His letters included four cryptograms in which he used 360 symbols. He said these ciphers would reveal his identity, if anyone could crack them. But investigators could decipher only one of the four cryptograms. The Zodiac Killer has never been apprehended. His notoriety continues and his identity remains unknown. Though not identified definitively in his lifetime, Arthur Lee Allen, whose IQ was 136, was suspected of being San Francisco's Zodiac Killer. From evidence gathered after his death, his guilt is now a near certainty. His ability to evade capture and kill ruthlessly places him among the most evil masterminds. There are masterminds who thrive on the mental challenge of executing the perfect crime. Two such were Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, wealthy university friends of extraordinary intelligence. Chicago, 1924. Bored with their privileged lives, Leopold and Loeb hatched a plan to kidnap and kill an acquaintance. Money wasn't their objective, their aim was to get away with an elaborate crime. They picked up a 14-year-old boy, Bobby Franks, a neighbor, bludgeoned him to death, poured acid on his body, and burned his clothes. Then they dumped his body near a railway line and sent a letter to the boy's parents demanding $10,000. The pair delighted in reading about their crime. Virtually everything had been perfectly orchestrated, but they had made one mistake. Leopold's glasses had accidentally fallen out of his pocket at the crime scene. Police found the glasses near the body, leading to the arrest of the killers. 
During the trial, a prosecutor described the crime as so meticulously carried out that there would have been no arrest, no hearing, had the glasses not fallen out. Leopold and Loeb were found guilty and given life sentences. While they were intelligent assailants, they were novice killers. And not in the league of another Chicago murderer who had preceded them by decades. H. H. Holmes, a 19th century physician, was one of the most prolific and cold-blooded masterminds of all time. For him, murder was not only a thrill, it was lucrative. In 1893, the Chicago World's Fair was in full swing. Visitors from around the country had descended on the Windy City. Many stayed at Dr. Harry Howard Holmes's Grand Hotel. It was three stories high, stretched an entire block, and was known as the castle. But behind its walls, it was a death trap. Scores of people disappeared after entering the hotel. Their fate is the stuff of blood-curdling nightmares. Holmes possesses every trait of evil. He basked in dismembering, mutilating and abusing his victims. Holmes' one-man murder spree would go on for two years. H.H. H. Holmes was a 19th century doctor whose intelligence was his greatest weapon. What transformed this successful physician into one of the most vicious murderers in American history? His story begins with a troubled childhood. He was born in 1861 and grew up in isolation. Death fascinated him. His mother was a zealous Methodist. She read the Bible to him almost every day, instilling in him extreme ideas of good and evil. His father was an abusive alcoholic. The boy tried to escape by immersing himself in his studies and collecting macabre souvenirs. As a child, he was a loner. He finds refuge in his astounding intellect. He is an exceptional student, but somehow his mind gravitates toward all things grisly and morbid. At the age of 16, Holmes graduated from school. Soon afterwards, he entered medical school, where he showed extraordinary skill in dissection. He also managed to make money from the school's cadavers. He took out life insurance on fictitious people, named himself the beneficiary, and presented the cadavers as the deceased. Over the next 17 years, his crimes escalated to murder. By 1893, Holmes had made something of a name for himself in the booming city of Chicago. He was a successful young doctor and owned a large building that housed a chemist, other shops and a 71-room hotel. Neighbours called him the land-rich physician. But some of the building's workers and hotel guests began to disappear. As many as 50 travellers went missing after checking into his hotel. Holmes was gassing them in their rooms. He then sent the bodies to the cellar through a secret chute. In the pit of this house of horrors, Holmes engaged in repulsive acts. He beat and sexually assaulted his female victims. Then, applying his surgical skills, he sliced up the bodies. He disposed of body parts in vats of acid or a furnace. Sometimes he polished and assembled the bones into skeletal models, which he sold to medical schools. Holmes possesses every trait of evil. 
He basked in dismembering, mutilating and abusing his victims. Fortune was Holmes's primary motive. He not only sold skeletal models, but continued his insurance scams using his victims' bodies instead of medical school cadavers. But as the World's Fair began to wind down, people became suspicious of the activities at his hotel. Holmes fled Chicago. He traveled around the US committing more frauds and murders. A Pinkerton investigator, hired by one of the insurance companies, tracked him down and had him arrested. As the investigator dug deeper into Holmes' activities, he discovered the killings. Holmes was convicted of the murder of an associate whose body he had tried to use in one of the insurance scams. He later admitted to 27 killings, though some estimate he murdered as many as 200 people. In 1896, H.H. H. Holmes was put to death by hanging. Holmes went to great lengths to kill. He constructed a monstrous house of death. He successfully pulled off his crimes by manipulating the public's trust and by drawing out the murderers. He was deceptive, depraved, indeed the consummate torture murderer. For these reasons, I put Holmes at number 22, the highest level of the scale, and where Edmund Kemper stands. Because Holmes killed more victims and tortured them more prolongedly, he even outdoes Kemper in depravity. Of all the mastermind killers, perhaps the most clever was Ted Kaczynski. He was also among the most elusive serial killers of the 20th century. Once a child prodigy, as an adult, Kaczynski used his extraordinary intelligence to terrorize Americans for nearly two decades. He was the country's most wanted and feared killer, known simply as the Unabomber. Living secretly in a three by four meter wood cabin, the Unabomber spent his waking hours obsessed with a violent plot to remake the world through the use of terrorism. In 1978, he began sending parcel bombs to people whose beliefs he found offensive. This former mathematics instructor at the University of California ultimately killed three people and maimed two dozen more. For 18 years, Kaczynski baffled the authorities. His crimes yielded no evidence, nor any clues as to his identity. The Unabomber was as elusive as a ghost. The Unabomber case was probably one of the longest and most terrifying mysteries in the U.S. How Ted Kaczynski got away with murder for nearly two decades points to an extraordinary mind. To understand the roots of Kaczynski's violence, Dr. Stone examined his childhood and uncovered disturbing details. Chicago, 1942. Nine-month-old Ted Kaczynski was admitted to hospital with a severe skin rash. Doctors strapped him to the bed to prevent him from touching the sores. For a month, the baby lay in isolation, barred from human contact. According to his mother, young Ted was never the same. He became shy, awkward, listless. Socialization begins at birth through human contact. Isolation at such an early age can be emotionally destructive. Far more likely, however, is the fact of his having been born with genetic tendency to paranoid schizophrenia. It soon became evident that young Ted possessed exceptional intelligence. At the age of 10, Kaczynski scored 170 on an IQ test. Genius level supposedly began at 140, although the test is no longer used in American schools. He was academically 